everybody this is melissa your free range psychic today is march 14th 2024 it is a thursday and today adam stargazing astrology is going to be on my show again and we are going to look into some things so adam tell us first of all you could give your information and then tell us what we're in store for all right melissa thanks so much for having me on for this monthly collaboration it's always very exciting <laughs> So my YouTube page, for all you out there, it's Adam Stargazing Astrology. If you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'm also currently offering discounted astrological readings of all types. So if you are at any crossroads in your life, uh, if you are interested in your natal chart or the natal chart for someone else, or if you are interested in a relocation chart, with an, which is an astrocartography chart, if you're interested in travel or move of any type, um, or if you're interested in a relationship chart, please um, inquire at my email, it's Adam Astro, that's A-D-A-M-A-S-T-R-O-777 at gmail.com. And my email will be in the description box of the video as well. Thank you. So um, what are you going to uh, look at? Okay, so we have a couple of really interesting things. So I'm going to start off with the full moon forecast. Uh, and then after that, we are going to uh, actually head off to England, where we are going to be talking about Kate and William. So when is the full moon? Okay, so the full moon forecast is going to be occurring March 25th, which is right around the corner. And the reason why this is uh, is an extremely highlighted full moon is because it is going to be a lunar eclipse. So what happens during these eclipse times is that each eclipse acts as a unit of concentrated energy. So there's a lot of shift, a lot of dynamic, and a lot of movement that's going to be going on, um, especially because the sun sign March 25th is going to be in Aries. So Aries is that forward action that forward movement that forward momentum as represented by the sign of mars so mars indicates uh any anything from aggression independence fearlessness and again that forward movement um opposite the moon sign is going to be in libra so libra is about harmony it's about beauty it's about relationship compatibility as well so what is happening here is our nodal axis, which represents our evolutionary directions, is going to be in the same signs as the sun and the moon sign. So the south node, which represents our foundational springboard and our past and our comfort zone, is going to be sitting next to the moon in Libra. So that being said, if there are relationships out there that are not working, time to get rid of them. Anything sitting next to the South Node stands for our comfort zone, but it also represents our past. There's kind of a catch-22 here because the past needs to be smoothed out in order for us to spring into the future. So that being said, this is the foundation of smoothing out relationships and letting go relationships that don't work in order to move us ahead into that North Star, into our destiny, which represents the North Node. And that is Aries, which is all about our independence, our 
courageousness and our fearlessness. So the nodes and the sun and the moon are going to be very much in sync. So that being said, this is the opportunity to really, really move ahead this spring for a big jump start and for a lot of forward movement and a lot of change. However, we always know when there's a lot of change and a lot of growth, there is also a tendency to have to leave the old in the past behind us. So that being said, uh, Pisces energy is still going to characterize uh, this full moon. Four planets are going to be in Pisces. These are Neptune, Venus, Saturn, and Mars. Wow. So, yeah. So a lot of water down energy is going to be going on. Pisces navigates through dreams, inspiration, and intuition. So our intuition will be heightened having those four planets in Pisces. So we want to be able to use our intuition. We want to be able to use our compassion. Pisces energy is good at letting things go downstream. So for example, this really helps with that south node and that moon in Libra, letting go of relationships, letting go of toxicity, letting that go downstream with that Pisces energy. Pisces also rules compassion and forgiveness, right? So if we're going to combat our way through things, this Pisces energy is going to be more about um, the softening and letting go aspects. And um, as far as, you know, as far as being able to move on. Now, that being said, our energy levels are not going to be super high because Mars, which represents our energy, is in Pisces. Mars in Pisces tends to diffuse our energy resources. Um, the energy is still going to be there, but we may feel a little sluggish at times. We also may be sort of lacking a little bit of drive and a little bit of fire with this energy. That is okay, though, because planets in Pisces operate on their own timing using, again, the realm of intuition. Venus is in Pisces, which helps with things like forgiveness. Neptune is still in Pisces. That's a generational aspect. So Neptune is in Pisces for a long time. Heightened creativity, heightened sensitivity, you know, towards the imagination. And then the last planet, which has been in Pisces for a while, is that Saturn. So Saturn represents our structures. It represents our focus, our duties, our discipline. Saturn in Pisces, I always think of the monk that is meditating on the hill, contemplating by itself, um, contemplating you know some some distant um you know on some distant galaxy some distant star uh pisces also you know tends to be kind of otherworldly creative type of nature as well um so again great time for spiritual practice with that saturn in pisces how long is saturn in pisces gonna mm -hmm. so saturn in pisces is going to play out here for another several months when does it go into does it go into queer uh, Aries. Um, so yeah so it'll go into Aries um and then we'll we will definitely talk about that in you know in our in our um in our uh, future episodes yeah for sure up and coming <laughs> yeah yeah so some of the last aspects that Pluto which represents the power structures as, as I've been mentioning in other shows Pluto's is an Aquarius now again we're going to see more progressive more idealistic attitudes uh Aquarius is the realm of politics tending towards more democratic ideals however um the traditional ruler of aquarius is saturn right and saturn is all about upholding the tradition the the more um updated planetary ruler is uranus which is about breaking through those traditions so aquarius we find both so that's always something to remember with Aquarian. However, Uranus always wins because Uranus breaks down those structures in order for evolution. And what are we constantly doing? We're constantly evolving. So that is also something to remember as well. The last aspect, Jupiter, which represents our faith, our moral compass, and our beliefs, that's sitting right next to the planet Uranus. So Uranus is very strongly associated with those Aquarian ideals of democracy. So this is going to be furthering energy, uh, you know, things like AI, new technology, new way of thinking, breaking down gender barriers, and um, 
ideals on the side of democracy as well. Sounds interesting and, and actually mm -hmm. hopeful too. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a very hopeful aspect. Uranus is all about the new, bringing in the new. So, uh, yeah. What, so the full moon is... The full moon is going to be March 25th. Oh, you know something? What, what's coming before then is the equinox. Is, the spring equinox is on the 18th, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, looked at my yeah. I could be wrong, but I, when I glanced at my calendar, I, I think it's the 18th. Okay, um, yeah. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere near there. Yeah, but the equinox yeah. is a huge shift, huge planetary mm -hmm. shift each time. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. the yep. equinox or the solstice occurs so the equinox is the um when the day and night are equidistant uh, they're 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 exactly the same um uh, uh, uh amount of darkness and light mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so that's that and that really brings in this the spring energies so mm -hmm. the, the the um sp spring equinox and then uh the uh full moon will mm -hmm. be the next week <laughs> yeah so definitely some Oh, yeah, this just, you know, this spring leading with the eclipses is just ushering a lot of forward movement, a lot of change. Um, to everyone out there, change does not happen overnight. There is no need to develop an attitude of pessimism. Um, change is inevitable. However, it seems in our society, um, we want something and we're not really willing to kind oh, of go through mud. I'm going to interrupt. Mm -hmm. 19th. <laughs> I looked it up on my phone. The 19th. There you yeah. go. It's the so, uh, Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, 11.06 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. There you go. The 19th. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I just are, like to be accurate. Go on. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. So we are working through that muck. Just coming into the age of Aquarius here. We're going to be feeling that still this whole year um next year pluto will be in aquarius the whole year we're going to see a slow trajectory starting next year so that's also something to look forward to what do you mean by a slow trajectory a, a slow trajectory of aquarian ideals we're going to start seeing the effects of it next year this year is still sorting through the muck of the old capricorn energy um pluto moves slow you know pluto is going to be in aquarius for approximately 22 years so wow. that's also something to keep in mind too. This Plutonian energy, as represented by the power structures and by the evolution in the soul, um, does not happen overnight. Yeah, and I, um, I, I was I just had a live earlier, and and we were talking about Pluto in Aquarius and the transformation, it, it, you know, and how it, it's a planet of transformation. So <laughs> how how transformation works because things have to be like stirred up right things have to be kind of mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. we can't be uh complacent when um there's plutonian energy because it's it's not about um hanging on to anything or 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 uh you know some kind of like a uh smooth time it it it, it, it by necessity requires a churning an inner and mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. it's churning of, of things churning things up so that mm -hmm. they get cleared up and mm -hmm. uh, like, you know he really uh, essentially healed but it, it's an intense uh energy it's a purge yeah it's a they're real purge mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yep those are the that's the plutonian <laughs> energy we're 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 dealing with <laughs> yeah, I call it Kali. Uh, sometimes I think of Kali, the goddess Kali in the Hindu. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, she's very Plutonian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's so interesting, and that's coming up, uh, folks. Um, so, what next? All right. So I have some interesting information on Kate Middleton as we move over to uh, to England. Um, yeah, so as we know, you know, she's been kind of out of the limelight. We know she's had an abdominal surgery a while back. Um, you know, and generally, you know, we, we, we tend to see, you know, popular figures like herself, you know, notable figures kind of back in the limelight. Um, and, you know, there's been, uh, you know, she hasn't really been in there, you know, so there's sort of questionings about, you know, whether or not maybe she's still sick or, you know, like kind of like what's going on. You know, there's some 
mystery and some questioning. Um, so I'm going to read on her birth chart, see if I can tie in some aspects to some of this mystery, um, and then read on some of her uh, transits as well. Um, so Kate Middleton, so she was born in England. Um, so she has a Capricorn sun and a Cancer moon. So she is a full moon baby. And um, so what happens when you're born during the full moon, that lunar energy is much more heightened. So the moon stands for our emotions. And the moon is also the need for withdrawal and retreat. So she has an interesting dichotomy here. Her sun sign is in Capricorn. Capricorn rules the public image. Um, we're so used to her being structured and focused and perfect in this public image and holding up the status quo and the traditions as represented by Capricorn. Um, so that's very much her. Her shadow side is the moon in Cancer. The moon in Cancer is much more withdrawn, needs to retreat much more, is much more about self-reflection, self-protection, emotions. So this is her shadow side. What happens sometimes when an individual is born during the full moon is that um, it can create a teeter-totter effect. So what happens with the teeter-totter effect sometimes is that one of the astrological um, aspects tends to dominate. And in this, this case, it was her sun sign. What I'm seeing here is that um, this there's, there's been this subconscious need for withdrawal and retreat as represented by the moon sign for things like self-protection and healing you know, healing perhaps emotional wounds, perhaps healing, you know, family stuff. The moon in Cancer is much more private and much more sensitive and again needs that time to retreat. Um, so I am, that's one thing that I'm seeing here is a need for a balancing between those solar and lunar energies. Um, so another, some of the other aspects I see here is that her nodal axis um, which represents her path of evolution and her foundational springboard is in the sixth and the twelfth house. So her south node, which represents her comfort zone, is in the sixth house. She also has Venus and Mercury in the sixth house. The sixth house is an earth house um, ruled by the planet Virgo. Virgo and Capricorn, which is her sun sign, they share similar qualities as far as having their P's and Q's in order and being perfectionistic. That's her self node. That's the past. Um, her north node is her evolutionary direction, 12th house. The 12th, 12th house sometimes is sort of a disappearing act. The 12th house is about retreat. The 12th house is about isolation. It's about solitude. It's the subconscious mind. It needs time to reflect and let things go. The 12th house is a combination of all the 11th, other 11th houses that being said, there's a deep reservoir with the subconscious mind and a true need for a periodic withdrawal. So this is really more of the energy I'm picking up that she is going through a period of needing to withdraw and um, transform through this withdrawal phase. Um, so some other aspects here, she has a Pluto conjunct Saturn, um, you know, this is a very strong aspect of transformation. This is also someone who, this is also the aspect of a, of a fighter. Pluto is transformation. Saturn is structure. It's really the, the ability to be able to um, transform one's own structure throughout time and change one's own appearance and change one's own destiny throughout the time frame. And I believe this is kind of what we're seeing right now. Uh, let's see here. You know, you wonder if maybe, and this may have nothing to do with it, but she got, she because she's, uh, the, the moon and cancer are so sensitive, maybe she got, maybe it was stress, maybe mm -hmm. stress caused her abdominal issues or whatever, or, or, or if she already had abdominal issues, it just uh, kind of catalyzed a, a crisis event, and, and yeah. now she needs to retreat mm -hmm. from her nervous system and to retreat. Mm -hmm. just came to my mind it would make sense mm -hmm. yeah that could definitely play into a factor you know capricorn she has strong capricorn and virgo you know they are so much about being so perfect yeah it's a lot of pressure you know, she was meticulous in her dress she was very thin she probably watched everything she ate you know um 
those signs also, because of the meticulousness, also have a tendency to criticize oneself. Um, you know, so that is most likely something that was going on as well. And of course, right, those ways of being were outdated. They were no longer working, right? So what, there comes an event, right, that needs to change and transform because that lifestyle, that way of being is no longer working. Yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. And and it's uh, even um, exaggerated or amplified by being in, in the public eye all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that pressure for per perfectionism. Um, you know, that sun sign in Capricorn is so duty oriented. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn takes on the weight with their shoulders, you know, um, you know, it takes on the traditions, it takes on the way, it takes on the responsibilities. She was good at that and she excelled, but an individual can only take on so much, right? Before their nervous system breaks down, as you mentioned, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and there was a lot of like, um, uh, a lot of dysfunctional dynamic going on, like that she was dealing with, with the royal family, with uh, uh, Megan and Harry and all all that stuff. And then her, uh, you know, and then uh, her um, mother, her grandmother-in-law dying. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there was a lot, and there's a lot we don't know, obviously, but I can see how, and we don't know really what issues she had before then. It's um, true. True. You know, a, a lot of stress and a lot of strain. And I think what people forget is that they put these individuals on some sort of pedestal, but she's just a person. Yeah, and I, yeah, I didn't mean to put Megan and Harry in a negative light either. I just meant there was a lot of like, a, 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 like a antagonistic stuff going on, but, but more between. Sure. I, I don't know how Megan gets on with the Kate, but with you know how she got on with her grandmother before she died, and then the the weight of being like the good um, girl was, was really heavily on Kate because Megan was cast to see, to be the bad girl, and yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so ju just a lot to take on. Um, she's an extremely patient person. I know she waited a long time, you know, before she got around to seeing William, you know, so she has a lot of that earth energy, you know, re relating to, to patience, relating to stamina, relating to will, to her willpower. I don't see her fading out anytime soon. Rather, I'm seeing this need for a rest and a withdrawal and a retreat for further self-integration. So when she steps out again, right, she's going to be a bit of a changed character. Um, hopefully, you know, an individual, you know, that, that will um, uh, honor her needs a little more, you know, cause she's been such a, a public servant, you know, well, look at what happened to princess Diana in that role. Yep. Yep. And, you know, at least Kate, we, we, we assume, has a sympathetic husband. But it, it, it's it, there's a lot of uh, is it, of stress in that role. It's all about how you're seen and representing the monarchy and all of that. that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a big weight. Yeah, yeah. So I have some of her, asked some of her transits here. So I'll, I'll do a read on some of those. So the short-term transits are um, those transits that are going on right now uh, for the next couple of weeks. So the first aspect I see is that her, her sun sign is trining the, uh, the north node. So um, the north node is her evolutionary direct, you know, our evolutionary direction. The sun sign is her vitality. Um, by her stepping back, she is actually, it's a, she's a, this is a slow recharge of her batteries, of her psychic batteries, of her physical battery and her emotional battery that's slowly, slowly, slowly being recharged. Because her light, you know, after the surgery, you know, was most likely much, you know, dimmer. Um, Venus squared Uranus. Um, Venus's relationships. Uranus's instability and change. Um, you know, so so this could be perhaps a bit of a you know, changeable, maybe rocky period when it comes to re when it comes to her relationships. Maybe things could be up 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 for review. Um, Sun square Neptune, she needs to be careful here with her vitality and what she's taking in. A Neptune is very sensitive to vibrations, not the most vi vital. The sun is her vitality. So, you know, th this indicates that, um, you know, she's she 
this is an extreme sensitivity towards things like the spotlight, towards like the paparazzi. Um, you know, Sun Squared Neptune gets gets easily, you know, thrown off. Um, you know, so again, this would, would be the desire again for that retreat. Um, she also has a couple other Mars aspects, which can indicate, um, you know, that her vitality may be a bit compromised as well. So the long-term aspects, she had five of them, and they were all uh, with the foundation of the planet Uranus, which oh, really? is change, transformation, breaking out of those traditional bounds, and new beginnings. So this really is a bit of kind of like a death and rebirth for her. And the and in the long term, you know, this is really all about new avenues and new beginnings. Do you know what I think? What? Um, we were talking a little bit before about how my guides had shown me that that Charles was going to step down. Um, it, and this was around the time when Elizabeth died and I asked what the future of that was. And that mm -hmm. it wouldn't be too long before... Uh, Kate and William were king and queen. Maybe that has to do with her stepping, because that hasn't happened yet, right? There's King Charles is still King Charles. Yeah, he's still Camilla yeah. is still the queen. But I, I feel like maybe it's it has to do with her role as queen. That's a huge shift. Mm -hmm. And maybe as queen, she, she's going to make some changes. Maybe she's going to like maybe maybe even redefine the role of queen. We don't yeah. know yet what Kate's made of because as, mm -hmm. as a princess, you know, she's just not just, I mean, she, I'm sure she's highly representative and involved. Well, when she's active of, you know, whatever uh, mm -hmm. roles uh, uh, she's supposed to take just like Di Diana did. Um, but, you know, Diana was also very Iranian in terms of, uh, of the things she did, like, um, uh, bringing AIDS, you know, the, uh, the AIDS crisis and, you know, the, uh, it, the, um, you know, finding a cure for, cure for AIDS, uh, physically showing up at hospitals where AIDS patients were at, at a time when they were considered like lepers. Um, yeah. so, so I wonder how Kate is going to, um, define herself, but it may surprise us because Uranus is all about surprises, speculatively mm -hmm. thinking, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that maybe the king and queen are going to be much more equal players than they have in the past, because that would be Aquarius, too, mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. male and female being more balanced. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. there's many interesting ways that, you know, things, there's just a lot more potential now for things to play out in, in you know, different scenarios. Yeah. Like Aquarius. And especially uh, to be catapulted, into the role of queen because i think charles said ha, there was talk about him um uh, because of his health uh stepping down and and giving over the the monarchy to uh william and kate i i know i i saw that recently so at some point uh yeah and that's going to be a big deal a new king and queen mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so very very interesting stuff on her um so now I'm going to do a read here on uh, Prince William. So he has some strong Cancerian energy as well. So he was born during a new moon. Um, so his son and his moon sign are in the sign of Cancer. Just like Kate was born with a Cancer moon as well. With that sun sign in Capricorn. Now Cancer and Capricorn, they share a lot of the sort of similar qualities. Um... Capricorn's the patriarch, Cancer's the matriarch. Um, so that being said, you know, that they both share that moon in Cancer, which is very much family and traditional oriented. Cancer tends to more conservative, more traditional aspects. Um, so he has some interesting aspects here, um, which could potentially indicate... Um, maybe strife, maybe a little bit of conflict. You know, I'm not exactly quite sure. I'm just reading some of the aspects in the chart. Um, so he has his Mars and Libra. So Libra rules relationships. A Mars and Libra um, can have a tendency towards conflict in relationships. Um, a lot of Mars Libra people I know, um, 
there can be a tendency towards um, arguments with with the spouses. Um, so as Mars is sitting next to Saturn, um, this is, I would say, one of the more difficult aspects in astrology in the sense that the energy of Mars can build up and get repressed under that Saturn wall. So this could indicate things like temper tantrums and violent outbursts that potentially happen um, from unknown places. Um, I, I don't really know a lot of his past history. Um, this also indicates someone too, you know, who, who, you know, was, you know, a, a potential warrior type as well. Um, do you know about much of his past history? I'm sure one of our viewers will uh, fill us in or enlighten us because I, I really don't. I just know about his history more as, you know, Diana's son. and you Exactly, know, exactly. Yeah, just like you. Trauma right? he went through yes. when he was younger. But, yeah. And I always thought that I, I'm kind of surprised because the way that he, uh, he's imaged in the media and just publicly is that he's the, the calmer, more balanced of the two boys that Harry was the wild one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It took a while to get back, uh, to get on track. Uh, and then, yeah. uh, but, you know, and then he married Megan and now, you know, now they're not even part of the royal family anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, William was always seemed to me the one who just followed the path, you know, that he was born to. And uh, he, uh, so I don't really get a sense of him being uh, violent or angry, but then who knows what he's like behind closed doors? I, I have no idea. I, I've never heard anything about that. Yeah. Um, but he, and maybe, yeah. you know, sometimes Libra can be very passive aggressive. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that it's assertive and out there, but they can, you know, you can just, you can be just as damaging <laughs> or aggressive uh, passively. Yeah, it's yeah. Before because it's kind of like it's something that's like a barbed uh, comment or something that gets at you or wears you down over time. I, I don't know what he's like, but that would be more my sense of what he, how that would manifest okay. for him. I don't mm -hmm. know. I really yeah. don't know. Yeah, I mean, what, what happens is, um, you know, the energy can always go many different ways. That being said, he has a lot of intense aspects in his chart. He he, he really does. He has one of the more in, more intense charts that I've seen. But again, that intensity can be channeled in so many different directions. His chart is definitely not the one of a passive pushover. Let's put it that way. By any means, he has a Cancer Sun in his Sun sign and Cancer Moon sign. Um, so his luminaries, right, are in Cancer. Cancer more appears to be soft and fluffy. So I believe we're probably more seeing the that nice side of him. Yeah, yeah. But he has, I mean, he has a lot of these warrior aspects. He would be a great detective. So he has his Pluto in retrograde. Um, you know, Pluto represents power. A Pluto in retrograde in the past has been someone who has been in charge. Someone who is used to those power roles. Okay. Right? <laughs> Yes, King. but of course, the King of should, England should not overstep their boundaries. So there's a lot of evolutionary learning around power and power structures and the give and take in power of those individuals with a Pluto in retrograde. Um, so again, I'm mentioning a lot of stuff that's going behind, you know, behind the scenes. We're getting into more his psychology here. Um, so his Uranus is in, ret in retrograde as well. Um, that can be an unstable personality. Um, Uranus represents instability. When it's in that retrograde motion, it could, it could highlight, you know, change, instability, abrupt, you know, th um, perhaps abrupt situations, perhaps life changing events that happen, you know, on a on a on a quick scale. Um, you know, there's definitely not a lot of downtime in this chart. It's very active. Um, and that makes sense, right? Because he is someone who really has done a lot, you know, and is, has really, um, what can I say, traversed, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the you know, different aspects in different areas of the world. Um, so as Midheaven is in Scorpio, uh, you're, you're, the, the Midheaven stands for the goal aspiration. Scorpio is a natural detective. It's ruled by Pluto and Mars. So Scorpio is hard driven. 
Um, Scorpio is a sustainer and a fighter. Um, Scorpio will do what it can to fight the battle. There's an intensity and a strong survival skill with that Scorpio energy. Um, so this is also great. I didn't, did he, is he the one who worked as like a medic? Like, I know there's one of them who actually fought in, in the, the war. Harry. Was, was that the other one? Okay. I thought Harry went abroad and, you know, it was, okay. it was like a, after he was a bad boy for a while and then, you know, people worried about him and he was in trouble and then he went abroad and he, he completely like switched his trajectory and I think that might have been part of it. I'm going to look it up on my phone for you. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. I, I can see like the preparation of being when I said before the King of England, the King of England, it's a huge responsibility. It's being a leader. It's it's wielding a great deal of power. And uh, maybe that that that's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, got to be a little you got to be kind of hardcore. Do you think do. and we don't we really don't know what the relationship is like. I always assumed it was a more even relationship than uh, Harry and, and Meghan, but I don't, I, I don't know. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely a relationship that's based around a lot of the traditional roles because they have a lot of these traditional aspects. So that is definitely something that I can tell you for sure. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of looking at yeah. Wikipedia. Uh -huh. um, so he's 41 years old, born June 21st, eight, uh, 1982. Mm -hmm. um, heir to the throne. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he certainly has not been in the, the limelight the way that uh, his brother has. Mm -hmm. uh, what else are you getting in his chart? Um, so he has a strong north node aspect with his this evolutionary direction. It's an, a square aspect to Saturn that is really someone who is um, really all about overcoming challenges, overcoming obstacles, overcoming blocks. The square is more of a fighting spirit. Um, however, though, on the flip side, because it's a Saturn square, it can also bring in like, uh, you know, something like pessimism. You know, someone with this aspect would have to watch out for you know, for a, a pessimistic attitude towards oh, challenge. He was um, <clears throat> part of the Royal Air Force. Okay, yeah, I thought he Royal was... Royal Military a Acad uh, Academy Sandhurst, and there he started go. with the Blues and Royals. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And he graduated in 2008 from the Royal Air Force College Cranwell, joining the RAF Search and Rescue. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I thought he did. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had no idea. I didn't mean to give misinformation. I just was yep. trying to remember. And yep. he served as a full-time pilot with the East uh, Anglin Air Ambulance for two years, starting in mm -hmm. July 2015. Yep. Yeah, I knew. Yep, that's what I thought that he was part go. of. Like yeah, you're right. I don't know. Yeah. So much, so much is hidden with him, don't you think? Well, he has a Scorpio Midheaven, Scorpio's Concealment. His sun and his moon are in Cancer. You know, the, the water signs, uh, the energy is much more concealed, you know, with with the uh, with the water. And he has a real strong water element in his chart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Capricorn and Cancer are opposites, mm -hmm. right? They're opposite mm -hmm. uh, in the Zodiac. So they, and opposites attract, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. also um, can be oppose each other. Mm-hmm. And, and that Capricorn Cancer access is very traditional, very status quo. Yeah, and so that's, they're like, you know what, what it just came to mind? The, uh, like, wedding, you know, the marriage figures on a wedding cake? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what they, Kate and, and, and uh, William remind me of, you know, mm -hmm. that that's their image. Mm -hmm. well, we'll, so, oh, go on. Yeah. So, you know, with all of this intensity, I, I truly see him as an individual who at the foundation has support for Kate and at the foundation does love her and does want the best for her.
but you also said that there's a tendency to have some conflict. So right now, you think there may be. Well, you know, Libra is the aspect of relationship. And when I say the aspect of relationship, I don't necessarily mean the aspect of marriage. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, that could be things like argument with like paparazzi or argument with, you know, the public image. Cause when, when it comes to an individual like that, he's dealing with and in relationship to so many people and so many different avenues. Well, I think a lot of that remains to be uncovered when, uh, they enter, whenever that is. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sensing sooner than later, um, yeah. and I think the the public wants will love them as king and queen. <laughs> they they will be like embraced be, uh, because I do not think they uh, like uh, King Charles too much or Camilla. Oh. Camilla is kind of much hated. She she's not oh, really. There. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. has been hated for a long time. She was considered you know the it's like a, like the Cruella de Vil or something. You know, uh, oh, wow. when. Uh, it came to light that he was uh, having an affair with her and, and Diana was so hurt by that. And, you know, that whole kind of thing played out where, and, and then it was revealed, you know, that she had uh, been very, both of them had been very disparaging towards Diana and she, Diana was just used as a pawn and it was, it was pretty terrible. Yeah. Uh, so Camilla and Camilla's just th doesn't seem that likable. So she's yeah. the, the person everybody loves to hate. So now being queen was a hard pill to swallow for it. a lot of uh, uh, people uh, who, you know, uh, still love the, the monarchy. So I do believe that it will be a joyous occasion for the population when uh, uh, William becomes king and uh, uh, Kate becomes queen. That uh, yeah. that will be a whole shift. Yeah. In, yeah. Uh, you know, that representation mm -hmm. of, of, of the monarchy for England. Yeah, it's going to be huge. So, but I, mm -hmm. I don't believe it's going to be too long, too far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So transit, you know, so transit wise, he has uh, a lot of square aspects going on, which are all about, you know, squares are dynamic. They're unstable. They're changed. They're transition. So short term aspects, you know, a lot of his, movement is characterized by just a lot of transition with things right now um the long-term aspects um he actually has a fair amount of squares as well too some of them with pluto which represents the you know his his psychological processes and his um his power structures you know those will be changing those will be shifting um some aspects with with saturn and neptune as well um, you know, so ne Neptune has to do with, um, you know, the evolution of the soul and then Saturn has to do with, um, his, you know, the, his, uh, his role and his structured duty, you know, that he's playing. So just a lot of, a lot of change and a lot of shift going on for him in the short and long term. Sounds kind of challenging. Yeah. Well, just, just a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, well, well, very dynamic. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Watch mm -hmm. this space. Well, yep. uh, that's been very interesting. Anything more uh, that you want to say about either of them? Um, no, that pretty much wraps up uh, the astrological analysis of both of them. Yeah, very interesting, as per usual. Adam, mm -hmm. thank you for coming on this show. Sure. <laughs> and you know you'll be back. Um, oh, definitely. We could make it a monthly thing for sure. I would like that if, if you want to. And uh, okay, you guys, I love you. You take care and uh, I'll see you next week. Okay. Uh, oh, my live came out and you can, if you missed it, I, I, I published it today, March 14th. And oh, th th <laughs> this video is going to be out. This is very, gonna, very confusing because this video is going to be out on Sunday. So it won't be the 14th. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll correct that in the description or whatever but my live is out and if you want to watch it and comment please uh do so it was it was such an exciting and fun experience and i think i'm gonna do it again in the not so far future but i, I don't know when that's gonna be it could be before uh, a week from sunday or maybe the week after i don't know okay take care bye-bye you guys i love you bye